About five years ago, Audi gave enthusiasts a little piece of forbidden fruit known as the RS3. The RS3 was special because this sat at the very top of the A3 family, where it paired the company's legendary Quattro all-wheel drive system with a sonorous turbocharged five-cylinder engine. I was a huge fan of that model when I drove it a few years ago. However, today I'm actually out here at Spring Mountain Resort, about an hour away from Las Vegas, to drive this model. This is the completely redesigned 2022 Audi RS3. And just like its previous generation, we still have that lovely five-cylinder turbo under the hood, now making over 400 horsepower power and we also have a new all-wheel drive system that includes a torque vectoring rear diff so this thing it actually has a drift mode and the cool thing about the rs3 is it's now the only way that you can get a five cylinder in the audi rs performance family and this is also the least expensive way to buy one because the tt rs was discontinued late last year so if you guys have always been in the market for a fun feisty little super sedan how does the all-new 2022 rs3 stack up stay tuned to find out Now, before we talk about the styling changes for this all new generation RS3, I wanna remind you guys what's powering this beast. And this is the only way to get the company's beloved two and a half liter, five cylinder turbo engine. Now, if you guys have watched my video on the previous generation RS3, this motor should look pretty familiar. However, since the TT RS was discontinued, this is the only Audi to wear to get this motor. It's a 2.5 liter direct injection, double overhead cam, turbocharged inline five cylinder. Essentially think of it as like half of the uh, Lamborghini Gallardo's V10 with a turbo strapped onto it. Audi says they made some hardware and software changes this year. It also has the Sport Exhaust, which is $1,000 extra, and it now makes 401 horsepower. That is the most power that you're gonna find in the RS3. Apparently, Audi says in Europe, their engine actually makes the same 394. So this is up seven horsepower versus the previous generation. And it also makes 369 pound-feet of torque. That's an increase of about 15 pound-feet of torque. So smaller incremental increases. However, it's still the same lovely sounding five-cylinder engine. And this is also a slightly lighter car, which I'll talk about in just a moment. It all goes out through a seven-speed dual clutch transmission, of course, with launch control. This vehicle has their latest Quattro all-wheel drive system, which includes a sport differential at the back that includes a drift Mode. We'll talk about that later on when we drive this vehicle out on the road and on the track. And fuel economy actually got a little bit better this year. It's rated at 20 in the city and 29 on the highway. Please be sure to put premium gas in this thing. And Audi says that the weight of this car has actually come down by 100 pounds. This one here, as it sits, weighs in at around 3,400 pounds. Um, so it's actually 100 pounds lighter than an S3, which is really interesting as well. Performance is going to be very impressive. This car should do 0 to 60 in around 3.6 seconds. And if you guys go for the Dynamic Plus package, it'll reach a top speed of 180 miles an hour. This one here doesn't have that, so it has a top speed of around 100. 155 miles an hour. But let's go ahead and shut the hood and show you guys the styling of the latest generation RS3. You can see my particular tester is specced out probably exactly how I'd buy it. It's painted in this lovely shade of turbo blue. There's also a yellow, a red, a beautiful green that's also available. Uh, but you can see the front fascia is very unique on the RS3. It almost looks like it's wearing a mask because of all this sea of black from the Audi uh, corporate single frame grill, which this one here also has the black optics package. You can tell from the black Audi rings, the full blacked out in the grill, the blacked out mirrors, the black roof as well. It's a really menacing looking car. You can see the grill takes up the entire front end here. I really like the black Audi rings along with the blacked out RS3 badge. The headlights, you can see these are their full LED headlights which are standard. Uh, it also has the upgraded LED dot matrix headlights, which means this car, when you lock and unlock it, it actually will do a little animation dance. And in this area down here, it actually will display RS3 along with a checkered flag, which is a really cool little detail. Audi loves sweating the details. Audi also says that when you drive this car on the road, this right here comes on as a checkered flag, which you can sort of see it right now as a little checkered flag. It's gonna look obviously a little bit better at night, but again, really amazing detail. It's only on the driver's side headlight. And I love that it's now included on the US spec cars. It's really going to make this car have a distinctive signature, uh, light signature at night. You can see down here, more functional air intakes. You gotta cool that turbo engine. There's also a functional vent there to create an air curtain over the wheel. And this car, you can really tell, it's about two inches wider than an A3 and an S3. So at around 73 inches wide, it's not obviously a big 
you know, vehicle that's going to take up the road. Uh, but it does give this car a much more menacing look to it. And its wheelbase uh, is around 103.6 inches long. This is built off of a modified version, updated version of the MQB platform. So this also underpins a Volkswagen Golf R and a Volkswagen GTI. Uh, its overall length is around 178.6 inches long. It's about an inch and a half longer versus a standard A3 or S3 because of the bumpers, which are going to extend the overall length. Now let's talk about the wheels because I love these wheels. These are a 19 inch Y spoke wheel. It's included with the black optics package. You can see it has a satin black finish to them. They're wrapped in 245. Uh, 30 with R19 Pirelli P0 all, uh, summer tires. If you guys want, for 440 bucks, Audi will sell you a Pirelli P or Pirelli Trofeo R tire. That's basically a race compound tire. And that's a really cheap price because those tires are usually $400 a piece. Audi will sell you all four for 440 bucks. So that's kind of a good deal. You can see the brake rotors cross-drilled over 14 inches in diameter and you have a six piston front caliper which are red painted. The backs I believe are just a two piston. For If you guys spec in the Dynamic Plus package, this will also include a carbon ceramic brake, uh, which you can also get the caliper painted in blue if you'd like. That's an expensive option for five grand. This one doesn't have it, but if you plan to track the car a lot and you want that higher top speed, you're gonna want that Dynamic Plus package. You can see around the rest of the side profile, you can see there's a functional little vent here. This fender has been uh, bulged out to essentially make room for the wheels and to give this car a much more aggressive stance. I also like the black mirrors. You have side mirror turn signal indicators, and you can see here a lot of the mirror trim, uh, window trim has been blacked out. Uh, you have a black roof here, the standard panoramic sunroof, which is also nice. It looks fantastic with this turbo blue exterior color. I just love the way this car looks. And then looking at the rear of the car, this car is missing a carbon fiber exterior package for like $2,700, which would essentially give you a bigger wing spoiler at the back or a bigger uh, spoiler at the back. With, which is made out of carbon. I love the new taillights. You can see it includes a sequential design for the turn signal, full LEDs with the OLED design, I believe, as well. And then you can see, because of the black optics package, the badges are blacked out over here. The one thing I don't like about the new RS3 are these fake vents in the rear bumper. I don't love that. I think Audi could have uh, made some of those functional. And then you can see here with the black optics package, you have uh, black oval exhaust tips. And this one also includes the sport exhaust. It's an extra thousand dollars, but it's the five cylinder. So let's go ahead and fire it up so you guys can hear how it sounds. Sadly, it has a soft limiter, but we'll talk about uh, how good it sounds when I get this vehicle out on the road. Now, opening up the trunk of this car, you can see the RS3 is sadly only available as a sedan here in America. They do make a hatch in Europe, um, and the trunk capacity is a little bit smaller versus the previous generation at 8.3 cubic feet. It's still relatively usable, and I love how the seats fold down in like a 40-20-40 uh, manner. You can see the, the middle portion also folds down. There's a little bit of storage to the side there. If you look over here underneath here, you can see the battery is back here to help with the weight distribution. There's no spare tire. Instead, you just got an inflator fix-a-flat kit. So overall, the trunk is usable, uh, but I do wish that America was offered the hatch. So now let's move on to the interior of this brand new 2022 Audi RS3. The first thing I want to show you guys, however, is the key fob. You can see this is the current Audi smart key design. I like how small it is. It also feels really high quality. You have your lock unlock. You can also pop the trunk and there's also a panic button. There's no remote start from the fob. However, I believe if you, if you guys have access to the Audi Connect app, you should be able to do that. I don't have access to it because this is a press vehicle. Now, opening up the door and looking at the interior, you can see the turbo blue of my tester is complemented by a black interior. This is like the full Napa leather interior uh, with the nice diamond quilted stitching in it. Uh, the seats themselves are heated, which they don't offer ventilated seats, which sadly in this segment, it is a little bit harder to find. Uh, you can see the seats offer like a 12-way power adjustment uh, with a 
uh, two-person memory function as well, which is definitely nice. I love the interior of the regular A3 and S3, and obviously this is no exception. It's basically the same thing. In terms of the materials on the door panels here, you can see this is a slightly padded soft touch injection molded plastic. You have real aluminum trim for the door handle, which has a really nice hefty feel. Padded area over here, you have suede Alcantara here, and the window controls have a nice satisfying click, which is what you expect from Audi. Uh, my tester also has the tech package that includes the Bang & Olufsen stereo, which sounds great in case you guys get tired of listening to that lovely five-cylinder engine. Now getting inside, stepping in, you can see obviously this is a sedan. It has a lower step in height, but once you get in, it fits like a glove for me. In fact, this car just feels really, really comfortable in general. Getting in and shutting the door, it has a nice solid sounding thunk. And then when you want to start the vehicle up, you can see the button to fire up the engine is right here by the shifter. And you can see all of the tech stuff that you expect from today's modern cars is basically here. You have a 12.3 inch digital cockpit display over here. And then you also have Audi's new 10.1 inch display here that includes their new Audi MMI interface, which is wireless for the CarPlay and Android Auto. And it's also a touch screen. So again, it all works well. And I also like how in the A3 family, you don't have the fussy dual screen layout. Instead, you have traditional hard buttons for the climate control for your drive mode selector. You have a wireless phone charging pad here. And then you can see here uh, the way this this looks is all relatively easy to use. The Audi interface is really easy to use and it includes things like I said, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is definitely nice. The GPS function you can see, it's Google Earth, which looks really good. You can also, if you'd like, put the Google Earth display over here in the actual full digital cockpit right here, which definitely makes it look very modern. The cool thing about this is you can basically customize the way these gauges look uh, to your liking, which I'll come back to in just a moment. Let's talk about the interior materials because, because you can see here, this has a soft touch injection molded plastic, which is nice. There's also a carbon fiber trim here. This is not aluminum though. This looks like silver painted plastic, which remember this is the cheapest way to get into an RS family. So you have to expect the, the interior materials aren't gonna be the absolute best. You can see that same uh, plastic silver trim also carried over here to the center console. I do like the aluminum pedals, which is definitely nice. And then you can see here, this has the newer Audi shifter, which has the little toggle, the little toggle that some people may not like. This was first, I believe, introduced in the Volkswagen, or I'm sorry, in the Porsche 911. Um, and then you can see here, this has some touch controls for the skip uh, and the power button. And also, this is also a volume knob where you can kind of just rotate your finger around this, which is actually kind of cool. It works well. There is some piano black plastic that's going to show fingerprints, but at least Audi did keep it a little bit to a minimum, which is definitely nice. Um, I had my phone connected here earlier. Let's see if I can try to get it to reconnect. Uh, if you guys haven't seen what it looks like, just watch my Audi S3 video that actually will show uh, what the wireless CarPlay looks like. Of course, right now, while I'm trying to shoot this video, it's not connecting, but maybe it'll connect later on. Down here in the center console, you can see uh, electronic parking brake, cup holders. This right here is kind of just a hard plastic material. This is also a padded armrest, which is nice. Uh, if you wanna open this up, you can see, don't know why that wouldn't open, um, but you can see there's a little bit of storage right here, uh, which is nice. Uh, and there's actually no power outlets over here. You just have power outlets down here, which you can see there's two USB-C charging ports. Um, the seats are also pretty comfortable and supportive. I wish that they were cooled. However, they do have an extendable thigh support over here, which is nice. And you can see there's the CarPlay. It decided to come up. Um, the screen resolution, it looks great. The quality looks great. It's also relatively quick and snappy, uh, and it's also really easy to use. Now, I wanna come back to this uh, display over here because I wanna show you guys a couple of things. First of all, um, if you want, you can also put a sport display in here that'll show you your G meter, or show you your tire pressure, um, which is definitely important when you guys are taking this vehicle to the track. I actually like the way this one looks the most because it shows you the tack front and center with a digital speed. It also shows you how much power and torque you're putting out. Going back to the Audi display here, I wanna go into the vehicle settings because this car has some new drive modes that's included with the RS3. Obviously there's an RS monitor here where you can literally look at things like your engine temperature, your transmission fluid. It'll tell you whether it's cold, warm, hot, or overheated, the coolant as well, which is really important. Swipe that over, you can see there's your G meter, there's the tire monitoring, uh, pressure monitoring, which is what you guys saw as well. And then over here, if you guys go to um, the drive program, drive select, you can see there's three drive modes there, which are pre-selected or preset, they're comfort, automatic, and dynamic. And then there's also three new drive modes. You can see there's an RS individual mode, which you can customize that. When I put it into RS mode, you can see the tack changes to include basically what it looks like tire tracks, which is pretty cool. There's also an RS performance mode, which essentially also puts the stability control into a less restrictive setting. 
Uh, and as you guys can see, um, it also increases the engine revs. It was also doing the same thing on individual. And then there's RS Torque Rear, which this mode here is basically what you also find in the current generation Volkswagen Golf R. It basically will send up to 50% of the power to the rear and up to 100% side to side to allow for true torque vectoring. And it allows you to drift this car to let the back end step out. I'll be driving that uh, later on this evening, which you'll see later on in the video as well. Uh, of this car drifting around on this track. Uh, that is obviously not for public road usage, but the fact that Audi includes it in the RS3 really shows their commitment to handling and making this car a, a true serious performance machine. Audis have always been known for having kind of like uh, uh, front heavy with a lot of push, front end push, understeer. That all new all wheel drive system should be able to correct that, which is definitely a huge plus. You can see over here, heated seats, three levels. Don't want that here in Las Vegas. Um, and it looks like no heated steering wheel, however, and no cooled seats, like I said. You can also access the drive mode selector here as well from that button. You can also turn off the stability control. This car also has parking sensors front and rear along with an automated parallel parking system. But overall, the interior has most of the tech that you'd like. It feels nice and snug and cozy in here for me. It has a good amount of space. It also has Audi's driver assistance tech, but overall, it's a really nice place to uh, spend time. And then one thing that they did also add is the heads up display. That's something you could never get on an RS3 before, but it's included if you guys go for that tech package. Now looking at the back seat, the RS3 only comes as a four door sedan and the space back here is pretty usable. Now, obviously, if you want a bigger vehicle, you're gonna wanna look for like an S5 or an RS5, but at around 35 inches of legroom back here, Audi says, it actually is not bad for somebody my height. So once I get back here, and shut the door. You can see this is where I have the seat to drive. Uh, I have a decent amount of legroom here. There is a fairly large hump here for the middle passenger, but in terms of the materials, you can see hard touch plastic material here. Uh, so they did skimp a little bit compared to the front seats. It is padded over here. You still have suede Alcantara right there, along with some uh, nice, um, accents for the uh, Bang & Olsen stereo. I also like how Audi did include rear seat air vents. You also have two USB-C charging ports. You have two uh, storage pockets. And then if you fold this down, you can see there's an armrest that folds down that gives you two cup holders. So overall, the back seat is certainly not bad. Headspace also isn't bad because this isn't a full panel roof. Uh, but just remember, if you need a bigger back seat, you may want to look at one of their uh, bigger offerings in the RS family. So I'm gonna start this drive portion out on the road. We'll drive this car out on the track later on, but the first thing I wanna test is the zero to 60 performance. So we've got it in RS mode. Launch per, ooh, oh my God. <laughs> All right, our first run, we got 3.86 seconds and keep in mind, it's really hot out here. It's about 90 degrees. The launch control is very effective. Audi basically says 3.6 seconds. Uh, and I have no doubt this car should be able to do that. This is also going slightly uphill. So I'll see if I can do another run, but I have to say um, this car is still fast. It also sounds really good. That five cylinder, listen to that noise, guys. <laughs> oh my God. This one here also has the sport exhaust, which just amps everything up. It makes it even louder. And listen to that, the rev matching on your downshifts is just so good. Oh God, this car ha is just brutal. It's crazy fast. I mean, obviously you're gonna be paying about $12,000 more for the RS3. You're gonna expect performance like this. Uh, but the cool thing about this car is it keeps up with a lot of sports cars and supercars. Uh, and if you guys go for the Dynamic Plus package, it has a top speed of 180 miles an hour, which is just insane. But I have to say, this is with the car in its sportiest setting right now. And I thought the ride quality would be a lot more harsh, and it's actually not. I'm actually really surprised at how well this car soaks up the bumps. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's gonna beat you up like some other performance cars that I've tested, where the ride is just super brutal. Uh, but even in this mode here, the ride quality is surprisingly docile. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna have to wait until I test the car back home for a full week to see if the ride is more punishing. But let's go ahead and see what we can get again, zero to 60 wise. So it's still in performance and manual mode, launch control. Ooh, oh my God. Not sure why, oh, it's in manual, that's why. <laughs> Try that again. Make sure it's in S mode instead of manual mode. Oh, God, this thing is brutal. <laughs> Four seconds there. So again, it's uh, pretty hot out here. And uh, I suspect when I get this car back home, it should be able to do that 3.6 second claim 
easily. This car feels insanely fast, and it's also really easy to engage the launch control in this car. Just very, very impressive. Now, obviously, out on the track, I'm going to be able to try out all the different modes, uh, but here on the road, I'm actually going to switch it back into its dynamic setting because I suspect this is the setting that most people are going to be daily driving the RS3 in. You can see just going around this turn here, the steering. The steering for me is definitely light. It's very light, even in sport sport setting. It doesn't really transmit, transmit much feedback. So I am a little bit disappointed there. Um, but overall, the car suspension just really hooks up nicely. It's, it's really, really uh, lots of uh, feedback. Through our, the suspension just feels really solid. The car in general feels very solid. And you know what? I'm gonna try it one more time just because we can. There's a lot of places here to try it, so. One more time. Oh. <laughs> 3.89 seconds there. So again, <laughs> pretty consistent performance. This is with its fair, being fairly level on level ground. So very impressed there. And listen to the way it uh, rev matches on your upshifts there. Really, really great. <laughs> Oh my God, this car. You know, I was wondering if it was worth the extra 12 grand over an S3. It's just for the sound. It's for the sound. It's for the, how stiff the chassis feels, for the noise, which I said already. And you can see in this mode, it even still lets the back step out a little bit out on the road. This is not in its drift mode. Oh my God, this car is so good. But okay, let's, let's just use the RS button here. We'll go back into, let's go to comfort setting here because I want to talk about a little bit about how the car drives normally out on the road because I suspect most of you are going to be daily driving this thing. And boy, is this thing remind you that it's an Audi. Even though this is the baby Audi, it doesn't feel like the cheap Audi. You can hear the exhaust gets quieter. Um, it's very smooth riding. The visibility is also good. The seats in this car also are really comfortable and supportive. I just wish that they were cooled right now because it's so bloody hot outside. The visibility, like I said earlier, is great. This car does come with their uh, full speed range adaptive cruise control. It has lane keep assist. It has traffic jam assist. So it has all the tech that you expect. And the heads up display is also a really nice addition. You could never find that before on an Audi product in the past. Uh, but as you can hear, it gets relatively quiet in this car. Now, again, I'm going to have to retest this vehicle when I have it back home for a full week where I can test out the fuel economy, which I can't talk about now, although it's rated at 2029. 20, I suspect we're not going to be getting that uh, during these, you know, this driving. This car and the trip computer is saying 16 right now, but again, it only has 650 miles on it, so it's still really new. But basically, I'm impressed. Um, this car is very unique in this segment for its sound. It competes with cars like the Cadillac CT4V Blackwing, which I just drove, uh, Mercedes AMG CLA 45 also, which is another good option. But it's also the most powerful and it's also one of the most affordable options. So yeah, we'll get this out on the track. We'll see how it does out there. But out on the road, it's got that dual personality that I expect from an Audi product. All right, so here we are on the track with the brand new RS3, and I've switched into this beautiful Kamala Green. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but this car has the uh, Trofeo R tires and the carbon ceramic brakes. And I've already had a chance to go out on this track once, but this is still my first time here, so I'm not gonna push it as hard as I usually would, but Audi is serious about this car being a performance vehicle right out of the box where you could take it to a track and with these Trofeo R's it really sticks to the road hard and with these carbon brakes you should be able to punish these brakes all day long at a track oh my god this thing is impressive right out of the box and the great thing about the RS3 this is the lightest car in the segment for now <laughs> you can really feel how sticky these tires are. It's so impressive. Oh my God. Hard on the brakes here. I can feel the pedal going pretty far down, but you know what? The car just sticks to the road. The back actually likes to step out there a little bit. I have the stability control on, but man, this thing really is impressive. It's crazy that Audi is offering a Cup 2 tire on something like this. 
Like the old RS3 just wouldn't be able to handle this without some serious mods. And this now can take it all day long. The steering I do think is a little bit too light. I would prefer that it's a little bit heavier, uh, especially considering we're out on the track, but they actually do transmit some feedback from the front wheels to let me know what's going on. A little bit of understeer there, but I also went into the corner a little too hot. The suspension though in this car, this has the dynamic chassis control, and it is very impressive how well this car copes with the, uh, with this track. Like it, I drove it out on the road earlier, it was so comfortable, and now here, it feels right at home on this track. Put my foot down here, the transmission's so responsive, the engine sounds fantastic, and you could beat on these brakes all day long, just like Audi has us doing here at this track. <laughs> very, very nice. I apologize if I'm not talking too much, but uh, I'm not a pro race car driver, so I hope you're not judging my line or anything like that. Oh my God, that's like 100 miles an hour right there. <laughs> Hard on the brakes, okay. <laughs> Chuck it into this corner here. You can feel the back wants to rotate, but there's no understeer, which is a trademark of Audis. This thing has very little to no understeer, but it actually has a little bit of tail out oversteer, which I can induce with the throttle. It's really, really satisfying. It kind of has the characteristics of a front wheel drive car, an all wheel drive car, and a rear wheel drive car all at once, depending on what the drive mode is. You do take, you know, you have to take a second to get used to the dynamics of this car, because I do think it sits up kind of high. Like I'm used to driving a track like this in something a lot lower, like a you know a BRZ or a Miata or an 86. But you know what? This thing has very high limits, and it is hugely impressive. Oh my God, this is so much fun! <laughs> and to do it in a car that comes from an A3 chassis is so crazy. Like this is shared with a Volkswagen Golf, and you can really feel that torque split differential because this has true torque vectoring and it allows for more power to go to the back and 100% of the power to go to the side by side or to the side to side wheel. <laughs> Very nice. I mean, just chuck it into this. I could do this all day long. This is so much fun. <laughs> I mean, for $450, these Trofeo R's really just changed the dynamic of this car tremendously. Hard on the brakes there. It stays pretty stable at high, at high speeds when you are hard on the brakes too. That's very important. And you can see the back wants to come out here. I can induce a little bit more with the throttle. That is so much fun. That's so, so incredibly satisfying in a car that's front drive biased. <laughs> I am impressed. Color me impressed. But this is one hell of a car. And with the Dynamic Plus package and the Trofeo R's, it turns this thing into a proper track weapon that you can also daily drive when you're not tracking it. So after spending the last couple of days out on the road and on the track with the all new 2022 Audi RS3, I am blown away. Just like the first generation with that lovely five cylinder turbo under the hood, Audi has essentially taken what we love about the first model and made it even better. The new all wheel drive system in this car is truly a game changer in this segment. With that drift mode, with the fact that it allows you to uh, let the tail step out, with the fact that it now eliminates a lot of the understeer, the exhaust noise sounds good, the transmission is quick shifting, yet this car is still very comfortable out on the road. And as you guys saw, 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds in my test out on these desert-like conditions is really quick. I'll be curious to see what I can get when I get this car back home for a week. We'll retest the 0 to 60 numbers, of course. And overall, the interior. Audi basically offers this car in one trim, but you can get it with several different option packages. Now, obviously, is this car perfect? No. In terms of the competitive set, you can compare it to an Audi, a Mercedes AMG CLA 45, which does 
uh, make almost as much power, but I'd argue that it's a four cylinder versus this Sonorous five cylinder. There's also the Cadillac CT4V Blackwing, which you can get with a manual transmission, but some would argue that the Blackwing Cadillac more competes with a BMW uh, M3 or an RS5 Sportback, which is technically a class above. And then of course, whenever BMW decides to come out with the next generation M2, that'll also compete with this car. But what the Audi does offer here is a really nice balance. It's a comfortable daily driver with tons of luxury and tech. But now, unlike the previous generation, which had a tendency to understeer that felt a little bit too soft at times, Audi now gives us that hard edge performance that you expect from a vehicle that wears the RS3 badge. Now, speaking of which, if you guys are looking to purchase this vehicle, they are heading to dealer showrooms this summer, so any minute now, um, they should be arriving at Audi showrooms, and they start at $58,900 for the base model. Now, of course, this one here has a ton of options, options on it, from the technology package that includes things like the heads-up display, the Bang & Olsen stereo for $2,700, the black optics package, the sport package, um, the upgraded leather on the inside. This one here uh, comes to a grand total of $69,000, just over 69 grand. It is still missing the Dynamic Plus package for another $5,500 or the carbon fiber package for like another $2,700, which you could option this car up to be around $78,000. But this one here at 69 grand represents about a $3,000 increase in price versus the previous generation, the 2020 model, which Audi didn't offer a 2021 model. That is, I think, a reasonable increase, and it's about $12,000 more expensive than a comparable Audi S3, which I think for the performance, it's definitely worth the money. And this car is still less expensive than Mercedes AMG CLA 45, but it's about the same price as a Cadillac CT4V Blackwing, which you can get with a manual, which you can't get with a manual in this car, but this car is quicker, and I'd also argue that it has a nicer interior, and it also feels a little bit easier to live with on a daily basis. Well, with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Audi RS3. If you're also looking to see the latest car, as I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.